is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. This is Dave with MLogica, and we're now going to be beginning our next in our Tips and Tricks series for our webcasts. I'd just like to invite Mike Harold from ISUG to speak. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, those of you on the East Coast and Central Time, and good morning to you, anybody who's ever on the West Coast. Said, my name is Mike Harold. I'm the executive director of the International Cyber Issues Group, and I'll be seeing you today. Uh, TechCast is finding slow running queries in ASC 15, and, and those of you that have worked with ASC 15 and have done some performance and tuning, uh, hopefully we will find this extremely useful uh, helping to troubleshoot those troubles and queries within the database. Uh, what about ISUG? Uh, many of you I know are members of our organization, and we do appreciate your continued support. Uh, we are an independent organization, and our mission is to help you get better at the jobs that you do. If you follow in our logo on the top right-hand corner of your screen, you'll say uh, uh, learn more and earn more, and that's what we hope to help you do with these TechCasts and all the other services that we provide. The presenter will be uh, Jeff Garbus, and he'll be uh, giving the presentation. Let's note about next month's presentation, uh, which will be on, it's actually Wednesday, September 15th. A uh, date changed earlier today, and uh, somebody forgot to change the day, but the date is correct. It is the 15th, where the next tech test will be. We'll be covering some of the uh, various tools that are out there in the marketplace and dealing with remote performance management within the database. Uh, we'll send in invites out for that towards the begin at the beginning of the month. Uh, stay tuned and look for those in your inbox, and we'll sign up for that tech test uh, when it comes along. I hand uh, very briefly to the I'll talk a little bit about MLogica, and then we're going to move straight into Jeff after that. And, uh, uh, everybody, thank you for attending today. We appreciate your time. We hope these TechCasts are beneficial to you and help you uh, get better at the jobs that you do and work with the problems that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. tips and tricks seminars that we've been hosting. Uh, he's done a great job of many of these for us. There were Jeff, he's authored over and is our president of Enterprise Database Management. Uh, looking for your input on topics, but some of our topics we'll be discussing in later webcasts will be Sybase IQ, and data integration, and it's SQL for Sybase and ASC 15. not familiar with MLogica, we're a consulting services company that specializes in enterprise database management. Many come from Sybase, and we provide Sybase consulting to our customers on a global basis with an emphasis on P&T, migration training. We also work with SQL Server, Oracle, DB2. So please go contact me if you guys have any problems or need any help with on P&T or ASC 15 migration. After that, we're going to begin our webcast. I'm going to turn it over here to Jeff Garbus. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Jeff Garbus, and I am going to be your speaker for today. The topic is going to be identifying some queries in ASC, specifically in ASC 15. Uh, not that ASC 15 has any slower running queries than any other version or DBMS, but that's our focus for today. Now, before we start getting into this, uh, we're going to be using specifically the Sybase-only tools and the tools that are built into uh, the server for this presentation. I'll be honest with you. For the most part, when I am looking for slow-running queries, I don't start by digging into the, uh, the MA tables and into all the other uh, cool things that we're going to be talking about. I usually grab a tool, and I'll, I'll use that tool to identify things because it warehouses things and watches everything on a 24 by 7 basis. If that interests you, my email address is right here. Shoot me an email. I will tell you what it is I use. I just don't want to turn this into an advertisement. So that said, I'm going to move on and dive right into uh, slow-running queries. Now, that fixing a performance problem isn't difficult. What's difficult is identifying the root cause of the performance problem. Think about that one. Somebody calls you and says, hey, think slowly. What's the first thing you ask? 
Well, the first thing you ask may be what changed, but what you are also going to ask is, well, what's running slowly? And the answer is, well, some accounting system. What in the accounting system? Well, kind of everything. Well, when people start ask, answering questions like that, they really don't know how to answer the question in a way that's going to be useful to you. They can't tell you while well, running this SQL statement or uh, this one screen only is so when these four other things are happening at the same time. Identifying what specifically the issues are, what specific query you're running, what specific something is going on, is the hard part. So as we're uh, you know, the, the, the percentage uh, up here comes from actually two different sources, uh, one of which is the Gartner Group. The, the, the studies say that 80% of the mean time to resolution for performance issue is identification of what the root cause is. Now, what you'll find frequently is some try very hard to skip that step. What's when you skip it? Well, a CIO says, you know, time we've got this thing fixed, it's going to cost me X number of dollars. Uh, 80% of X, I can throw some hardware at it, add more memory, add more, uh, add more processors, add more, more thing, add an additional cache. And so frequently hardware gets thrown at the problem, but what happens when we throw hardware at the problem? Well, when we throw hardware at the problem, it's solved for another week or a month or a couple of months, but it ends up masking the true cause. When we ask the true cause, the downside for that is, well, we go back and solve the problem all over again, and sometimes throwing more hardware at it won't fix anymore. That said, uh, what we want to do is get rid of that 80% of the time or reduce that 80% of the time it takes us to identify the problem. Think about it uh, and also take another, uh, that's a Forrester group number that says 24% of IT staff time is devoted to resolving performance issues becomes simple to say that 80% of 24% gets you back 20% of time. So trying to do this in a more rapid approach, find out what the problem is, where it is, so you can start solving the problem instead of finding the problem, is a critical path to making people happy. So there are a lot of different places to look to identify the problems. Uh, what we want to do is identify the problem, then solve the problem, then verify the solution. This makes friends fast. Uh, both where it is, coming up with a solution, and then validating that you've actually found it. That validation is very important because it can be embarrassing if you say, oh, I've got it figured out, and you put the fix in, then they still have the same problem again. So agenda for this section, uh, we're going to identify the problem queries. That is to say, we're going to figure out how to identify what the problem queries are. Note that actually fixing the problem queries is beyond scope. I've got a separate five-day class where I talk about how to fix the problem queries specifically just identifying them. So how are we going to identify them? Uh, we're going to use a couple of different approaches. We're going to look at the MDA tables. Uh, some of you may be familiar with those already. A lot of you may be familiar with those already. We'll talk query metrics and the SP metrics command that allows us to set this information up, some application tracing, and a little bit of show full text. So from the top, uh, what happens when things seem to be slow? Well, probably 90% of what I do. People call me and say, Jeff, some running slowly, we can't figure it out, or we don't have the resources to figure it out, or uh, uh, something. Uh, Jeff can fix it. Well, the first thing I tend to do is take a look at things from a macro scale. Uh, by macro scale, I mean, let's look at the server before looking at the queries. Do we have any choke points on server? Great place to look for that is your SP Sysmon output. The SP Sysmon is going to allow us to collect information for a period of time, take a snapshot of server performance, and look at a specific snapshot of, say, a five-minute time interval or ten-minute time interval. Note that an awful lot of shops come in here and the Sysmon say every five minutes every fifteen, so they keep that for the long term. Again, I like a tool that keeps that type of information long term for easy graphical trending. I'll think about that at this point. The assessment output validates the environment from the macro scale. So do we have CPU bottleneck? If the CPUs are all running at 100%, that tells us something. Doesn't necessarily tell us that we're running out of CPU. For the shop, oh, February time frame. And they were running at 100% of 16 CPUs. And this is a place I was just brought in there for a few minutes. 
Uh, I was actually dealing with a system down to you in another department, and they said, hey, Jeff, can you talk to these people about performance? They're having a problem. Well, the, the, the system down issue had been uh, rectified and seemed stable, and I said, hey, I'm on your dime. Let's go take a look at it. I'll, I don't care if I'm dealing with performance or admin. That's uh, at your call. So I walk into a room, and there's probably oh, 15 or 16 people sitting around a big table. They're big screens up on the wall showing four different environments, and brought me in, and and they put me right on the spot. They say, "This is Jeff. He's a performance expert. Less for you." So, the, you know, these have been doing this for a few weeks. Uh, it was a third-party application. The the folks who are responsible for for it, they 